Good morning, Caleb is here. We are continuing our series of devotion looking at Jesus' journey to the cross this morning. I am going to read from Gospel of Mark, chapter 15, verses 21 to 41. Crucifixion of Jesus. Verse 21. A certain man from Cyrene, Simon, the father of Alexander and Rufus, was passing by on his way in from the country, and they forced him to carry the cross. Verse 22. They brought Jesus to the place called Golgotha, which means the place of the skull. It was the place of a skull. It was the place where criminals were crucified. Moving on, verse 23. Then they offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it. Jesus, our Savior, our Lord, our God, wanted to drink the full cup of the wrath of God over you and me. Verse 24. And they crucified him, dividing up his clothes. They cast lots to see what each would get. Of course, all of this was in fulfillment of various prophecies from the Old Testament. I love to mention Psalm 22 here. We look actually at a few passages from it this morning. Let me read Psalm 22 verses 16 to 18 for you. David writes, Dogs, that was a term generally used for Gentiles. Dogs surround me, a pack of villains encircles me. They pierce my hands and my feet. All my bones are on display. People stare and gloat over me. They divide my clothes among them and cast lots for my garment. We know that never happened to David. This is spoken prophetically. It says, they pierced my hands and my feet. This was before crucifixion was invented. The Romans actually came up with this crucifixion form of execution for the worst criminals. The worst criminals. They divided my clothes among them. David writes, this was written thousand years before the birth of Christ. Verse 25, it was nine in the morning when they crucified him. Verse 26, the written notice of charge against him read, the king of the Jews. In Gospel of John chapter 18 verse 36, our Lord Jesus says, My kingdom is not of this world. And then he says, My kingdom is from another place. Yet they wrote charge against him, the king of the Jews. Moving on, verse 27. They crucified two rebels with him, one on his right and one on his left left. I think the pilot had no idea when he was fulfilling a prophecy. Let me read it to you from Isaiah chapter 53 verse 12. He poured out his life unto death and he was numbered with transgressors, which means with rebels. Verses 28 and 29. Those who passed by heard insult at him, shaking their hands, shaking their heads, and saying, So, you who are going to destroy the temple and build it in three days, come down from the cross and save yourself. One of the first things we know about our Lord Jesus was he was misunderstood several times in his earthly ministry. Check out this interesting prophecy again from Psalm 22 verses 7 and 8. This prophecy was written down to speak of the sufferings of the Messiah. I'm gonna read verse 7 only. All who see me mock me. They hurl insults. 
shaking their hands. It was bad enough that the Son of God came to earth and man murdered him in the most tortured way possible. Worst of all, sinful men enjoyed, enjoyed doing it. Moving on, verse 31. In the same way, the chief priests and the teachers of the law mocked him among themselves. He saved others, they said, but he can't save himself. That was a fact which even the chief priests and the teachers of law could not deny. Everywhere in Jerusalem, in every single town and village were those whom our Lord Jesus had saved. Verse 32 Let this Messiah, this King of Israel, come down now from the cross, that we may see and believe. Those crucified with him also heaped insults on him. Jesus did something greater than come down from the cross. He actually rose from the dead. He rose from the dead, yet they did not believe even then. But many of the priests, praise the Lord, many of the priests did eventually believe, as we see in the book of Acts, chapter 6, verse 7. Let's look at verse 30. Three, a fascinating verse. At noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. This is one of the several supernatural phenomena that Mark records related to the death of Jesus. A Roman historian, Phlegon, even reports this. This is especially remarkable because during a full moon, which Passover was always held at, a natural eclipse of the sun is phenomenally impossible unless God did something supernaturally beyond times and seasons and rotations of earth and moon. It was nothing less than a sign of God judgment on human sin. Darkness visualizes what was taking place on the cross. Darkness is often a sign that we see in the scripture that is connected to judgment. The heaviness that sin produces in the heart of God to a degree that it wasn't just looked dark. It was felt dark. Darkness also expresses lamentation and sorrow. In the Middle East, where I come from, still when somebody passes away, all the family and close relatives even wear black clothes. All the walls in that street or even that village, a whole village, are covered with dark clothes so that it really felt dark when you go there. Verse 34, and at three in the afternoon, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lema sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? By quoting from Psalm 22, verse 1, Jesus declared that he fulfilled the passage in both its agony and its victory. This happened in the sense that God made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. As we read in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 21. Moltmann says in this specific scene we can see God speaks to God, God in front of God. A fascinating verse, fascinating scene. Verse 35, when someone of those standing near heard this, they said, listen, he is calling Elijah. 
That's perhaps another misunderstanding of what Jesus said as we observed several times in this passage. Not only did they get wrong what he said, Jesus said, Eloi, not Elijah, but they also only heard one word, Elijah. Verse 36, someone ran, filled a sponge with wine vinegar, put it on a staff and offered it to Jesus to drink. Now leave him alone. Let's see if Elijah comes to take him down, he said. Verse 37, with a loud cry, Jesus breathed his last. Gospel of John chapter 19 verse 30 tells us that he said when he cried with a loud voice, it is finished, which means paid in full. It's done. It's finished. It's completed. Put your wallet back in your pocket. There is nothing to be paid. How glorious, how wonderful life changing decoration for you and me. Verse 38, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. This is one of the other supernatural phenomena that Mark tells us about, a powerful sign, the curtain, which is one sense, the body of Christ, as we read in the book of Hebrews chapter 10, separated in the temple, the holy place from the most holy place. Only the high priest could go past the curtain into the holy place once a year on the Day of Atonement. Significantly, as the wall of separation between God and man was removed on the cross, the curtain was turned from top, which represents heavens, to bottom, that represents earth. The way has now been opened for you and me. In the Old Testament, however, turning the clothes was a way of expressing grief when you experience something extremely sad or painful. You see, Reuben, Jacob, Yeshua, David, and many others torn his clothes. To me, it speaks to me that our Heavenly Father torn his clothes here in this scene. Verse 39, And when the centurion who stood there in front of Jesus saw how he died, he said, Surely this man was the Son of God. The centurion is a picture of all who come to Jesus through the cross. At the cross, people saw that Jesus was the Son of God, actually. And this fulfilled Jesus' promise in John chapter 12, verse 32. If I am lifted up from the earth, I will draw all people to myself. Verse 40. Some women were watching from a distance. Among them were Mary Magdalene, Mary, the mother of James the Younger, and of Joseph, and Salome. Verse 41. In Galilee, these women had followed him and cared for his needs. Many other women who had come up with him to Jerusalem were also there. Time has gone. Let me pray. Dear Lord Jesus, we thank you for the cross. We thank you for that perfect sacrifice of atonement. We thank you that you endured cross for us, Lord. We thank you that you intercede for us. Thank you that you pray for us, Lord. We pray in the glorious name of our Lord Jesus. Amen. Thank you. Have a good day.